Welcome back now. British members of parliament have launched an inquiry into the state of Brexit negotiations after the latest round ended in recriminations about a lack of progress. The exit in the EU Select Committee will explore the strategy of the UK government as well as whether it has the capability to manage the process effectively. Visiting professor from the Policy Institute, King's College, London, Andrew McLeod, joins us now to talk more about this. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this time, uh, Andrew. Well, let me start. Let me start by asking. Let me start by asking. Does it surprise you in any way that an inquiry has been launched into the Brexit negotiations? It surprises me that it's taken this long because it's been pretty obvious to most observers that the UK hasn't had a clear and coherent strategy for Brexit since the Brexit talks have started. So I think it's a good thing that the parliamentarians are now starting to ask some very hard questions of the government. But to be honest, if you go back and look at the media and the public dialogue over the last, well, even before the result, during the referendum, people have been saying this is going to be harder than people think. So I'm surprised it's taken this long, but boy, do I welcome this inquiry. Otherwise, the UK could be in real trouble. Now, Boris Johnson, the UK Foreign Secretary, of course, has criticised Theresa May's Brexit strategy. Does his position echo the frustrations of the British people? Y yes and no. To say that we should uh, be able to criticise and provide ongoing critiques to the Brexit strategy is right, and Boris is right in saying that. But Boris seems to think that Britain can hop on the big white colonial horse and charge back into the Commonwealth and be welcomed with rose petals as if Britain was still the colonial overlord. What Boris Johnson hasn't figured out yet is the Commonwealth, including countries like Australia and Nigeria, has moved on. Brit um, Boris claims there's going to be this grand, glorious future for Britain post-Brexit. But where is this grand, glorious future coming from? You know, for the first time since the Romans left London, Britain has to carve an independent identity off the northwest coast of Europe without any colonies and without any empires. I see a very broad path to failure in Brexit and a very narrow path to success. And so far, I don't see any narrative coming out of Parliament as to how we get that narrow path of success, what that narrow path of success looks like, and why other countries would want us to. All right, Boris, Boris also said, well, this is a chance, you know, really to reform the British, you know, tax system. Are you on the same you know, page with him? Look, it is a chance to reform the British tax system, reform the immigration system and all of that sort of stuff. Indeed, it is a chance to do all of that. But that doesn't answer the question. Boris seems to think there'll be this massive increase in trade after Britain leaves the European Union. To believe that, I need to believe the following. Firstly, that existing trade will stay the same. And secondly, there's a whole bunch of countries and companies out there willing, ready and able to trade with the United Kingdom, but are not because the United Kingdom is in the European Union. I just don't believe either of those things. For example, imagine the number of Nigerian businesses that are currently trading with the United Kingdom because the United Kingdom is the front door to Europe. If the United Kingdom leaves Europe and leaves the customs union, we are no longer the front door to Europe. And if we're not the front door to Europe, that trade must diminish. So firstly, we're not starting from a base. We're starting from a decrease on that base. Secondly, how many Nigerian companies are out there saying, I want to trade with Britain right now, but I can't because Britain is in the European Union? I think the realistic answer to that is zero. So Boris can talk as much as he like about reforming the tax system. But what he's got to start to realise is there's a clear and present danger to the British economy unless the British parliamentarians can come out with a very positive narrative explaining to the rest of the world why they should trade more with Britain than they currently are now. And I don't see that narrative. All right. What, what, what does this comment particularly say with a view to the fact that it's only a few days before Theresa May uh, would give her speech in Florence in terms of, you know, being on the same page with the current government? Well, clearly there are ructions and ramifications inside the Conservative Party following both the Brexit referendum and the last general election. 
There's all sorts of rumours swishing about Westminster, about who's going to launch a leadership challenge against Theresa May and when. Can you imagine a circumstance in which there were a leadership challenge against Theresa May and Boris Johnson did not try again? So I think he's trying to position himself for that leadership challenge. Now, uh, let me also, you know, ask this. This may, um, you know, sound, you know, somehow, but the question you know, needs to be asked, just that the members of parliament have started to do, does the UK government have the capacity, have the capability to manage the process of Brexit? We don't see that so far. You know, we are six months away from when Article 50 was triggered. We're more than a year away from when the referendum actually passed. We've only got 18 months left to finalise a deal and realistically any deal needs to go through all European parliaments for approval. So we're at most 12 months away from when we've got to finalise this deal. We've already done 12 months from the referendum. We've got 12 months more to go. If we just double the amount of work on exit that we've done from the referendum to now, we're going to fail miserably. We still don't have a clear overarching narrative, which goes like this. Britain post-Brexit will be will be what you know what is it and what are the interim steps that uh, we need to take to make sure britain reaches this narrative now we don't have the narrative in public we don't have the narrative agreed by the public we don't have the narrative agreed by the european union or the rest of the world so how can we agree any of the interim steps that need to take place so this strategy that has been adopted so far by the theresa may led government has not you know, worked really well, has it? I don't see any evidence of that yet, no. All right, uh, visiting professor from the Policy Institute, King's College, London, Andrew MacLeod, thank you very much indeed for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much.